Does your nutrition support your goals and your athletic performance as a weightlifter? If not, then stay tuned. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to my friend Casey, owner of Thriving on Nutrition, about best practices for nutrition for weightlifters. Okay, we all wanna hit PRs, but if you're struggling with recovery between training sessions, if you're having a hard time getting through a singular training session, if you're not quite hitting the type of progress that you wanna be hitting, one of the biggest things that we're gonna look at is your nutrition. So stay tuned. In this video, we're gonna talk about nutrition basics for weightlifters with my friend Casey, who's gonna teach us all how to thrive on. All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about macros, what they are, how much of them you should be eating, calorie basics, recommendations of what to eat to support your training, both before and after, a few tips for some plant-based eating for those of you out there, and a few considerations for meat day nutrition. Hi, my name is Julia. I'm a weightlifting coach and I get a lot of questions from my athletes about nutrition and I'm not a nutritionist So I'm gonna defer to somebody who is this is my friend Casey She runs thriving on nutrition and does a lot of coaching both for average people and weightlifters in terms of helping to optimize Not only their health their body composition, but also their performance Casey tell us a little bit about thriving on so Thriving On is a functional nutrition coaching business that is all online based. We have clients all over the United States. Like Julia said before, we work with lifestyle people, but we also work with athletes just like yourself. Our athletes perform at their best, recover at their best. We also provide some insight as to like lifestyle changes that they can make to help them support their training goals. Sweet, yo. All right, so before we go any further and we start really talking about some stuff, I wanna remind you this is the internet. We are not doctors. If you need medical assistance, if you need guidance from a professional, then please seek out somebody who is qualified. This is purely for instructional purposes. It's just to provide some good quality information that is science-backed currently. All right, so Casey, tell me a little bit of a general rundown of what macros are yeah. and how you introduce them to your athletes. For sure. Okay, so macronutrients are proteins, fats, and carbs. And macronutrients are nutrients that you need in large quantities. And um, especially with athletes, there can be a certain ratio of proteins, fats to carbs to help them support their training and recover really well. Um, so proteins are um, basically the building blocks of like things like muscles, your organs, bones. It also helps balance out hormones and has a lot of um, nutrients as well within it that really do help the body feel really great when you train and trying to build that muscle. Fats are really great for hormonal health. They help uh, transport nutrients th throughout your body. They also taste pretty great. So, and then carbohydrates are going to be, um, they have a lot of nutrients within it, uh, within it as well, and along with fiber. A lot of your fruits and vegetables are gonna be carbs as well. But it's going to be your main fuel source for your training within the gym and also help you recover. So as an athlete, carbohydrates are gonna be super important. All three of them are, but carbohydrates are what's your favorite, your muscle's favorite fuel source. That's what makes you feel so great in the gym. Right, and then the second half of this question, and it's one I get a lot, and I'm sure you do too, is how much should I be eating? <laughs> how many of these things? What should I put in my body? What I would say is, is it's entirely dependent on the person. Everybody's a pretty, pretty snowflake and what, how much I eat will be completely different from Julia and, and, and any other person that you meet. It all depends on your activity level, um, your met metabolic health, how much muscle mass that you have on your body, how much you're moving and how much you're training. I want to offer you guys a free guide to help you figure out how much your, your uh, calorie intake needs to be in order to perform well. Here's the thing, eating too much or too little are both extremely detrimental to your goals. So having a good idea as to how much you should be eating on a daily basis can be such a huge game changer in terms of actually seeing the results that you're looking for in and out of the gym. Casey's included this really great PDF to help you figure out your maintenance calories. And I'm gonna include that in the links down below. Definitely check it out. Uh, that way you can learn a little bit more about thriving on and figure out Basics, how much should you eat? This is like step one, kids. Yes, definitely. Within Thriving On, we actually break it down into kind of like a pyramid of, of priorities. And the first step is always calories. Then it goes into macronutrients. Then it goes into food quality. Surprisingly, people think it's the other way around. It's actually broken down in the guide and there's a live training video as well to help explain it all. So you guys can definitely check that out. It will help you figure that out for sure. All right, this is a question I also get a lot. So we figured out basics, right? We know what we should be eating. What are your guidelines of what to eat before and after training? 
Just going back to what you said before, basics is always what matters, right? We want to ultimately make sure that we're hitting our nutrition goals at the end of the day. If you're not getting enough sleep, not drinking enough water, if you're not hitting like at least maintenance calories, then we can look into pre and post workout nutrition. And what I would suggest is definitely planning a lot of your carbohydrates before and after your workouts. Okay. And we also want to make sure that we're um, keeping protein before and after your workouts as well. This protein, again, is really great for um, helping build muscle tissue and recover. So we want to definitely plan it around. What I say in terms of carbohydrates, because there's a lot of people out there that try to eat before they work out and they get an upset stomach. A lot of times it's because they pair it with a lot of fiber and fat which they're both really great for you. But when you're in the, in the gym, it kind of makes your stomach upset yep. and it slows down your body's ability to access carbohydrates. That's your muscle's preferred fuel source. So we want to make sure that your body can uh, access it like this. Mm -hmm. So that way you feel great from start to finish of your training session. Very similar to the pre-workout nutrition. Um, but the post-workout meal needs to be A, the biggest meal that you eat in the day. That's where your body really needs to recover and needs all the nutrients and then the second thing is, is we also want to make sure that it's the most nutrient dense meal that you eat in the day as well. Because again, your body is really, really hungry for all those nutrients. It just yeah. put a ton of work in to the gym. It's ready to repair that muscle tissue so that way it can grow and you can get nice and strong. So we want to make sure that your body is getting what it needs to do so. Great. That's really uh, important information. I think highlighting the value of post-workout nutrition, not only at in terms of your macros, but also in terms of those micronutrients so that we're really taking advantage of that anabolic window post-training. Yeah. So important. The other thing that a lot of people forget about is hydration. Hydration can affect your performance just as much as your food. If you're dehydrated during performance, uh, let's say you have a competition day, it can actually decrease your performance by up to like 30%. That's a huge difference, right? And so we want to make sure that we're drinking enough water every single day. A guideline is 90 to 120 fluid ounces a day, depending on the person, their size, and how active they are. Um, and then from there, I would add some electrolytes after your training to help you recover and stay hydrated. Like seriously, once my athletes start drinking enough water and they're super hydrated, they're like, where did all this energy come from? It's amazing. Yes. And it's so simple to do. Yeah, so simple. I have an increasing number of athletes who are going plant-based. Now, whether okay. they're vegan, vegetarians, whatnot, they're shying away from meat as a protein source. What options and advice do you have for athletes choosing that route? We actually do work with a lot of both vegan or vegetarian. And so what I always do is make sure that I lay down the facts of like, what does this decision cause your body? Some things that you should pay attention to. And so what I'm gonna do is just do that and then give you some actionable steps to help you optimize your nutrition while being plant-based. So the first thing that we need to realize is when you're a vegan and vegetarian, you're taking out a whole food group and it's that food group is mainly protein. So we have to realize that it's going to be harder for you to get protein in totally doable, but you're just going to have to figure out, uh, go through a little bit of a trial and error yeah. until you start getting in there. I would definitely suggest um, supplementing with protein powder and then trying to stick to um, nutrient dense sources like beans, um, lentils, things like that. They're going to help get that protein intake up. The second thing that you're going to have to realize is that when you completely takes out a whole food group, just like keto or anything like mm -hmm. that, you're running the risk of becoming very deficient in certain nutrients. When you're going vegan and vegetarian, you might be deficient in things like calcium, B12, iron, um, potassium, a lot of these nutrients that are essential for the body. So what I would do is just definitely be proactive, pay attention. I'm a huge fan of testing, not guessing. Don't just go take supplementations blindly because that could actually cause more harm than good. I would regularly get blood work done to make sure that you're filling in those gaps while sticking to the diet that you believe best fits you. Plant-based protein is not as what's called bioavailable. So that's just a big fancy word of saying that your body, just because it's eating a certain amount of protein, doesn't mean that it's actually absorbing it and using it to help you build muscle. Right. And so um, plant based protein is not as optimal as like, let's say, meat or dairy or fish or or eggs or anything like that. So I recommend my vegan and vegetarian um, athletes actually have a higher protein intake to increase their chances of getting adequate amount of protein. in. something else that you can consider is supplementing with BCAAs. And like I said before, definitely lean into protein powder. So that's definitely going to help you bridge the gap. Um, and then from there, uh, we also want to make sure that we're sticking to better quality. Sometimes we get into protein sources 
for plant-based eaters, but when you look at the ingredient list, it's just a mile long and it's no mm-hmm. different than let's say eating processed, something right yeah, processed extremely food. processed yeah. foods. Um, so we want to definitely make sure that we're also paying attention to the quality of the food sure. that we're taking. In. What are the big takeaways in that, that I think applies to everybody, not just plant-based eaters that you mentioned that I think is so important to reiterate is test, don't guess, mm. right? If uh, the blood work thing is really, really important. And a lot of times it's so easy in the fitness space to just like see an idea and run with it and not actually know if it's helping your body or harming your body. And that takes some accountability. It takes some ownership. That's actually one of our core principles within Thriving On is like our first step with any person that we work with. Like we always need to create awareness first, right? We may think that we're doing something. We may feel like something's happening, but it doesn't actually mean that you are executing it. A lot of times we have a lot of clients coming in saying that they eat a lot of quality of food or they eat a lot of protein, they don't think it's going to be a problem. I'm like, okay, great. Do you mind if we just create a little bit of awareness? And when they do, they're like, oh. it's a whole other story, <laughs> right? A lot of times when you create objectivity, while by bringing in a little bit of numbers and bridging the gap between how you feel, because that's still important, yeah. and what, um, what the data says, you're able to make more educated decisions and hopefully get you to the results a little bit faster than if you just went off by feel. Can you give me your top three favorite tips or secrets to meat day nutrition? Of course. That's actually one of my favorite things um, that I do with my athletes is usually when we're leading into a meet, I sit down with them about like two weeks before and we like just talk about the whole protocol, how to build into it. And I also give my athletes a couple of chances to practice it just because I want you to feel confident in what's going on. Uh, going into that meet day because everything's going to be freaking crazy. crazy. You're probably nervous. nervous. If you practice it before, <laughs> you, it's one less thing for, off of your plate. You already know what works for you. You already know what you're going to do and you're just going to show up and just do it. Right, so my top three secrets is one, don't change a thing. Mm. Don't change a thing, right? The last two weeks, you're not really going to improve your performance much. Not much in technique either, maybe a little bit, especially if you're a novice athlete, you might make a few tweaks here and there, but that's about it. And so from there, it's about risk mitigation, AKA not screwing anything up. And so you want to make sure you stay, stick to the same things you always do. Um, the same type of recovery protocol, the same types of food that you typically eat, the same sleep routine, everything like that. You want to keep it all the same. A big mistake that I see a lot of athletes do on meet day, they get so excited that they're going to crush donuts and pizza out. and muffins yeah. right before yeah. they train. Carb load. Yes. And they're wondering why they don't feel too great while they're training. You don't want to change a thing. The second thing that I'm going to say is keep fats and fiber fairly low. Like I said before, in the pre and post workout nutrition, fats and fiber can upset your stomach and it slows down your ability to uh, access the glycogen that your muscles need to perform really well. So make sure that you're planning around having some carbohydrates before you lift. I would say about an hour is a good, decent time before you lift. Then have some carbohydrates, maybe a little bit of protein during your meat, like maybe in between snatch and clean and jerk. And then after, I usually tell my athletes just to go have fun, but do try to focus on protein and carbohydrates. But yeah, actually after the meat, most of the time I'm like, go do your thing. Like, Don't even worry about it. Exactly. You just lifted a bunch of heavy weight. Go celebrate. And tip number three is actually going to be practice what you plan on doing meat day on the heavy day that you usually have prior to that meet, about a long minute or two weeks before. Because then you can practice it, you can see what does work, what doesn't work, and then from there make adjustments as you go. So like so a lot of times people have a heavy meet di- or a heavy lifting day on a Saturday the week before. Plan it out, bring all the food that you plan on doing on the meet, try it out, see if it works. If it does, great, you know exactly what you need to be doing. If it doesn't, you can make adjustments before meet day. Yep. Uh, that's something that I work on with my athletes a lot. Anytime we do mock meets or practice competitions, not only are they learning the flow of a meet, what kind of attempts they're going to take, understanding their own uh, arousal rates, because everybody's different. Some people need to be really hyped up. Some people need to be really calm. But we're also going to practice their nutrition. It's a really integral part of a successful meet experience. Casey, thank you. Of course. Ah, Thanks for having me. Yes. It was a lot of fun. So fun. Hopefully, really, really informative. Where can people find out about you? Where can they find out about Thriving On? You can 
can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, my handles are going to be thriving on Casey. So you can also find um, our website when you go to the guide that's actually, again, in the description. Yeah, if you haven't gotten it yet, stop what you're doing. Go get the guide. That will also direct you right to our website where you can learn more about thriving on, what we offer, what we do for our clients, and then ask any questions there as well. I invite you guys personally to our community um, just so that way any of your lifters or anybody watches this can help level up with their nutrition, ultimately helping them lift heavier weights over top of their head. Lift heavy weights. Yeah. That's what we're here to do. That's all awesome. that we're all about. Thank you so much. Of course. All the things that you're going to need to be successful are going to be included down below. Yep. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer. We're going to see Casey soon. Have a great day. See everybody on the platform.